So I've been using this one incredible formula in Notions, Formula 2.0. This formula allows you to make incredible changes that were not possible with the earlier Formula 1.0. And in this video, we'll go through five examples of how we're using this formula. And by the end of this, you'll be able to create something extraordinary. To know why it's so impressive, you first need to understand the five major changes that Notion made to this Formula 2.0. So firstly, they allowed adding comments and making the formulas easier to read and understand. Secondly, they introduced the dot command, a new functionality that simplifies writing formulae. Thirdly, they enabled adding multiple variables within a single formula. Fourthly, they introduced new syntaxes and combined them with JavaScript, with functions like filter, map, and find. And last but not the least, they added the ability to work on lists and combine features from the previous changes. So we covered number one in the earlier video. And today, we'll talk about the most powerful formula, the dot command. So you might ask, what is the dot command? So the dot command is a simpler and shorter way to write formulae. Start with the object that you want to manipulate. For example, the name property. And then just add a dot at the end of it. To break up a sentence captured in the name property by word, just use the split formula. To find the number of words in the sentence, add another dot and then use the length formula. So you can write these with a dot as a separator and then you can put them in separate lines using the multi-line formula capability. By chaining these formulae together, you can read them from left to right and you can change the meaning of these formulae by changing the syntax after the dot. For example, let's just replace the length with first. That gives you the first word of the sentence. So when you add a dot at the end of the property, you can see all the available formulae being displayed along with their syntaxes. Five examples of the dot command's power. Let's look at the five examples. That clearly shows you what Formula 2.0 does, but Formula 1.0 cannot. So each example builds on top of the other, and that way it results in much greater payoffs. If you follow along, you will be rewarded at the end of it. Example one. So let's say you have a person property. And in our example, let's say it's responsible. So I've added my name and the name of my company in the responsible column, which are two different individuals already available in my Notion workspace. The Notion workspace remembers the names and the email addresses that are associated with it, allowing you to choose from them when you need it. So this feature is not limited to the database table, but it's available right through the entire Notion workspace. Let's say I want to extract the email ID of my company, which wasn't possible in the formula 1.0. So in this formula, I would call the object, which is responsible, and pick the last item in that list, which in my case is my company's name by using the same dot formula. I'll chain another dot to this and use a Notion command called email. One thing you'll notice is that in Formula 2.0, you can format the text inside of the formulas as well by using a command called style, which again, I can chain with a dot. So we want to bold this and change this to Notion's default system color blue. So I'll add B within inverted commas to bold this and blue within inverted commas for the color. Now let's build on this concept with another new example, example two. So for this example, we'll work with two databases. One is tasks and the other one is projects. So we've linked the tasks and the projects database using the relations property that's available inside of Notion. And we've created some sample projects, three of them, project A, B, and C in the projects database. And we've created five sample tasks, one to five in the tasks database. So let's start with the tasks database. We'll add in a column called project and add all the project names for each of the tasks. Let's add in an automation, the new one that Notion has just launched, so that every time I select a project name, it will automatically control the relation, which will help us manage the projects even more efficiently with lesser number of clicks. So let's look a little deeper into how I define the automation. You give the project name and you add a trigger and then a corresponding action. So since there are three projects, we've added three automations. Now let's see what happens if I change the name of the project. It just automatically reconfigures the relation as well. So in the tasks database, we've introduced a date property and we've filled this up with some random dates ranging from September 25th to October 29th. 
So this is needed for a formula that we will introduce into the projects database. Let's link tasks one to three with project A and tasks four and five with project B. And for simplicity, let's not have any tasks assigned to project C. So one of the magical powers of the dot command lies in its ability to create rollups automatically within the formula itself. Now we want to roll up the earliest date and the latest date from the task without creating any rollup property. If we had to do this in the traditional form using a rollup, we needed to create two different rollups. But here we can do it in a single formula. So if a project like project C does not have any tasks assigned to it, we don't want to populate the project date at all. We want to leave it blank. So let's go through the formula. So to introduce a blank for project C, we need an if statement. So this is what the if statement will say. So if the tasks property, which is a relation property is empty, then it will return a null. Otherwise, we will execute a series of chained dot commands. Now let's build the rollup, which is pulled from the relation property, which in this case is F2 tasks. So we sort this for the task sequence using the dot command. We chain this dot by another map command, and that will enable us to access the entire list of properties from the tasks database. And we want to store this list of current values for the date property of the database. So effectively, we've created a list of dates. Now from this list of dates, we want to select the earliest date, which we can do by using that dot command again and using first and the latest date using last. And then you can separate the whole thing by using a dash in between both of these dates. And so this is the result of that formula. Example three. Okay, so let's build this further. So in the tasks database, we've created a status property which has three different statuses, not started, in progress, and done. So in the projects database, we want to list the tasks by status, excluding done, inside of this tasks status formula. And what we want to do is underline the status as a headline. Again, if it's empty, we want a blank here. Now let's look at the formula. So this formula has three parts. And as usual, we start when it's empty. Then we define that part where we tell the formula to do something for not started tasks. And then we define this for the in progress ones. So as the beginning part of this syntax, I'll start with the if statement. If the condition is true or false, the condition for the relation property being empty and the true part of the condition returns a null. And the false part will return the non-started and in progress tasks. For the non-started part of the condition, we define the title. So in formula 2.0, you can define any piece of text within inverted commas, and you can add a style to it by using the dot command. So this adds dot started combined with an underline this time. Now we add a dash, and to return it to the next line, we add a backslash n within inverted commas, and this will indicate that it needs to go to the next line. Now we're ready to add the syntax to filter just the not started tasks from the tasks database. The syntax is filter the F2 tasks, and using the current list of tasks, filter it for the status being not started. So we want to list the tasks one below the other, not one after the other, for a cleaner view. So again, we chain this with another dot command called join. And within that, we add the backslash n to indicate that it needs to go to the next line after each line item of the not started task. We also want a gap between the not started and the in progress. So we add this part of the syntax as well. So now we do the same exact thing for the in progress tasks, where we add the title and the filter for the tasks for in progress, one below the other. So this end result looks something like this. But we're not quite done yet. Example four. So while we've given these tasks a status, we also have to build for overdue. We'll add an overdue formula in the tasks database. The ones that are due today, due tomorrow, due within the next 15 days, due in the next 30 days, and of course, due much later. And if you're so interested, you can add several other conditions to this formula. So this time, we define the variable. That's the days between the date property and today's date. So the variable here that we've used is d, and the command for all of this, the formula, is let. To define the various overdue scenarios, we've introduced a multiple if statement, ifs, so the syntax, the way it's constructed, is a combination of conditions followed by the true result in a series of sequences. And you can see this clearly because it's stacked from top to bottom. And at the end of it, we'll just include the false part of the statement. So it's if 
true, if true, if true, if true, if true, and for that all results, and then followed by the false part of the statement. For each of the scenarios, we want the text to appear in a different color. So we add in a different style for each of these scenarios. Interesting, isn't it? Now, one easy way to combine both the task status and the overdue would be to define a concat formula in the tasks database itself. But Notion has replaced the erstwhile concat formula to do something a little different. But they've replaced the concat with simple pluses. And I want to retain the page link for each of the tasks, which would get lost in the latest iteration. So I just introduced a new formula called ID, which is nothing but the ID property of the property field. And then you can add in a link to the ID in the formula for tasks overdue. You still need to take this property and combine this with all the features of example three and add in a bit of magic to the whole thing, example five. If you see the earlier task status side by side with the new one, that you want to create. You'll notice a number of changes that have started to emerge. So let's look at how to create these things to finish things off. So in the projects database, let's add in the tasks completed inside of the task status. So we start to validate first whether the relation property is empty or not. And that's the famous if statement, which adds a null if it's true. Then let's add in a legend called tasks completed and follow that with a dash. And then we bold the whole thing using the style command. The next part of the command is to find the number of tasks that have been completed and divide that with the total number of tasks for that specific project. So we filter the tasks for status is done. Use the length formula to calculate the number of completed tasks. You see how the length formula has changed patterns every time we use it? It's not just for finding the number of characters in a string like it used to be before. Now we are using it for things like completed tasks or the total number of tasks. Now after a few lines, we'll insert back the formula for the not started, just like before. But there's a small twist. Instead of referencing the name property, we'll use the task overdue property instead. We'll add in a similar formula for the in progress tasks. Now if you click on the task itself, notice that we've managed to pull the links for the task and the colors that we had assigned to overdue in this one property. We're not really done yet with formulae 2.0. But for more, you'll have to watch the next video. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay notified.